Hello guys and welcome to the third part, yes it is the third part of our Blender Materials series. Um, I'm going to pick up straight away from where we left off with the old project file and today we're going to be looking at uh, textures. Uh, if you want to catch up from previous uh, episodes just head on over to the website and click the project files button and you can start straight away. So uh, I'm going to start looking at textures and more specifically image textures today. So to start off with, I'm just going to go GY and move the sphere out of the way. I'm going to activate my screencast key so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to go Shift A and Mesh, then Plane. If you don't know what I'm hitting, just look down this bottom half of the screen here and you'll be able to see. So I'm just going to move the plane towards the camera. I'll rotate it a bit on the Y axis and the Z axis. And we're going to start with the plane because that's quite simple to texture because it's a basic 2D object really. And if I hit F12, there we've got a plane. It's amazing. But we want to do something more with that. We want to put an image texture onto our plane. And to do that we first need to add a material to it. Now say I wanted this not to be a plane but to be say a brick wall. This would be really complex to do if you didn't do it using objects alone and having textures really gives you ability to add that. So I'm just going to rename my material to wall. And then I'm going to jump straight over to the texture tab to add a new texture. So I'm going to hit new and I'm going to call this bricks. And you can see under type there's a whole list of textures. I mean the screencast messes it up a bit for me. I'm not sure how that comes through for you. I'm going to add an image or movie texture because that's what we're going to be focusing on. I'm going to hit open under image because there is a ton of options we've got here we've got mapping influence properties we've got loads of stuff so first we need to just open our image now we get into a file browser and I'm gonna note navigate to where I keep my textures and what's really handy when you're looking for images is if you hit this little button at the top what this does is display it as thumbnails so you can actually see the images you're looking for so the image I'm looking for is this bricks old mix size 0148 and I've downloaded this from cgtextures.com which is a really handy website and to load it in just hit open and you can see under our preview we've got this uh, texture and if I switch to material or both you can see how that's affecting on the material so I'm going to shut down image and let's just do first of all a test render okay so that's going pretty well, we've got our bricks on there, but there's a few problems. First of all, we've got this sort of funny sheen going on at the top. I'm not sure how that comes through on the screencast, but that's because of our specularity value is going right across the whole object. And second of all, the bricks are going the wrong way. And there's some very easy ways we can fix that going into our settings. So first of all, let's go into image sampling and look at this flip XY axis. And that does what it says on the tin, and so if you saw the preview there, if I just uncheck that, that's literally flipped the object so now if I do another render the bricks are going the right way but we've still got that sheen and that's because we currently have the image on there but there's no um, normal mapping and normal mapping is basically sort of minute details in an image and we can change that by going into the influence settings and you can see we've got a whole list of things you can have your texture uh, change the amount of mirror or the alpha value or just a lot of stuff going on the intensity of your specularity we're looking at this geometry section and more specifically this normal now these are going to be the two settings you're going to be looking at a lot color for diffuse which basically affects how it looks and basically what color the the image is so whether it's going to display just that object and normal which is going to be like minute details and if we go down to bump mapping which is very, it's the same as normal mapping which is what this is and you can see we've got an option to low quality medium quality and we have best quality we can set ours to best quality and if I hit F12 now oh my god it is full of these tiny little bumps which makes it more realistic but that's a bit too much so I'm gonna set mine to about 0.4 do another quick render and there you go that's more like a sort of wall because our specularity is being affected only by sort of raised bricks. So that's a good way to make your textures really much better. And that's basically it for texturing a plane. 
So let's get some textures onto our other scene. So I don't know why you'd want this, but let's try and put our brick wall onto our sphere. So we bring our sphere forward. I'm going to disable transparency and mirror. And let's do the same thing. Go to textures, add a new texture, we'll call it wall. And under texture type, select image or movie. And we can actually just select our image from this drop down menu. And we close that up and we hit F12 and something has gone wrong. This image is really stretched across and that's because the sphere isn't a flat object and we can change that in a few settings. If I go undo to image mapping, sorry not image mapping, just mapping, um, we have a thing called coordinates and projection. Now we'll go over UV later on in this tutorial but we're going to be looking at generated for now and you see currently we're set to flat which is fine for a flat object like a plane but we're not looking at flat if we look under here we've got the option for tubes or cubes some basic geometry but if we select sphere you notice that now it's mapped across the sphere correctly and if I do F12 you can suddenly see that's mapped correctly and I can then go into my influence and change the normal mapping set that to maybe 0.4 and do whatever you need to do to make it your best looking material and suddenly we've got this sphere with bricks on it and I'm not quite sure why you'd want a sphere with a brick wall on it but let's just go with that for now so we've managed to get the texture onto a sphere and a plane but what about if we wanted to put it onto our cube and what about if we wanted something other than a flat texture so let's bring our cube forward and for this I'm actually going to delete some of the textures on the cube just so it's got one solid texture over the whole thing. So now all of our cube is this orange texture and let's go and add a new texture. And what if I wanted to say use a texture I'd used before? So if I go undo my blend files, I recently did a tutorial called Dice in which I created this texture and this is where I want each of the numbers to be mapped to a face. Now if I try and do this normally, if I were to add a new texture, set it to an image or movie, find my image, which is this one here, open it up, and because it's a cube, let's go on to mapping and see what we can do. Let's try a cube, let's see what we get. Oh, it's mapped the whole image to each side and that's not what we want and actually for this to work we're going to have to look at UV unwrapping now UV unwrapping can get very complicated so I'm just going to go over the very basics UV unwrapping is when you take a 3D object and it's like you cut it up to a 2D net because images are always 2D they need to be mapped onto certain areas of a 3D object so it's equivalent of you taking a pair of scissors and cutting along some of the seams on a 3D object to make it 2D and sort of flatten it out. Like breaking up a box, a cardboard box or something for example. So first of all we need to mark some seams on this object and there's a function for that in Blender. Now I've already worked out which seams I want to mark and it's helpful if you go into edge selection mode when you're doing this because obviously seams are on edges and if you just work through these are the seams we'll need if you just want a moment to copy those out All right, on both sides and you just have to go control E and go mark seam uh, pause the video if you want to mark some your own seams and then we need to open a new area and you guessed it it's going to be the UV image editor it's currently set to my render result but if I go and go U in the 3D view and select unwrap and I just go into a new image oh you see we've got our four not four six cube faces laid out in 2D and these are actually cut up along those seams now if I change this setting here which means my selections here translate into the 3D view if I select this side a seam you can see it's been cut there and split into the two faces you can select the different parts of your object and see how they're actually laid out. So I selected this face and that's what it is in the 3D view. But it's the wrong way. 
So if I go A and A while selecting in the UV image room, um, UV image editor, um, you can actually translate this UV projection the way you translate any object. So if I go G, we can move it. And if I go GX, I can move it on the X axis. And if I go GZ, um, it doesn't do anything because it's 2D, so it hasn't got a Z axis. However, we can use R for rotate and S for scale, the same as we would usually. So to get this to line up, I'm just going to go R, and let's go, actually, let's go R minus 90. And I'm just going to go G and line this up. Now, if you watch the tutorial on flying dices, you'll see how I exported my layout to create this image. But for now, I'm just going to line it up like that. And now if I go F12, it's exactly the same. And why is that? Well, it's because we haven't told Blender to use these settings yet. So if we go back under mapping, you see we've got an option called UV. And if we hit UV, we've got an option to select the map. Now, if we just leave it at default, it's going to use the map we've used. And if I hit F2, oh, it works. We've actually got that map to work. And we can just change the projection back to flat because we've got a flat image. And there we go. We've got our full texture displayed on all of our different faces. So that's about it for a basics look into textures. Obviously you can take UV unwrapping and textures way further than I've done in this tutorial. Uh, if you're looking for more information, go onto the website or watch the um, DICE tutorial which goes into more depth about how I created this texture. Uh, thank you for watching.